everyone. Welcome to Lex Talk World Talk Show presented by Clickaway Creators. Today we have Mr. Puneet Kumar Singh with us, and Puneet has over 13 years of experience as a chartered accountant, and he specializes in survey, search, treasure, which includes income tax, international taxation. He was also secretary for All India Federation of Tax Practitioners, Northern for two years. He was nominated in 25. most promising accounting and tax consultants in india 2016 by consultant review and he has presented a number of papers on various professional forums and is faculty with icai for various courses of ca students so now without further ado let's dive into more about him so hello mr singh thank you so much for joining us thank you for having me here it's a pleasure pleasure is all ours sir and now uh, mr singh well, first of all please tell us about your journey so far as a practicing professional well it's it's been a adventurous journey i can say it's it's been a wonderful journey my father was a first generation uh, lawyer and he specialized in uh, income tax uh, especially in search and seizure matters i came into practice in 2008 2009 my father was no more so uh, with his legacy i have got uh, got to learn very fast and uh, you know take up all the assignments that he was carrying on and uh, the additional benefit is that i am a chartered accountant as well as a qualified lawyer but i practice as a chartered accountant so uh, we have the peculiar thing is that we have offices in gurgaon as well as in varanasi but as an emotional attachment we have kept our head office in varanasi and we do um, international taxation matters and some litigation litigation matters from our gurgaon office and we are especially uh, the international taxation matters from the gurgaon office and a lot of search seizure and survey matters from uh, varanasi so it's been it's been very fulfilling i have been uh, advising on matters related to european countries the uae egypt uruguay as far as uruguay recently during the omicron wave i have traveled to new caledonia which is a small uh, island nation near the uh, uh, near the australia australia as well as uh, new zealand and uh, uh, provided some consultancy there so uh, that's the journey so far that's uh, that's really nice to you know and now i would like to ask you about a complex legal issue that you worked on and please also describe the complexity and tell us how you approached it yes so there have been many complex issues that have come up when you talk about cross border uh, agreements etc the one that i would like to share is related to um, we, uh, one of my clients had got a job of dismantling a, a plant from uh, norway which was to be erected in vietnam so the agreement between the norwegian seller and the vietnamese purchaser it was uh, that the plant would be exempt from vat when they are purchasing it from norway we were the uh, contractors for uh, you know dismantling that machine in norway and uh, the the uh, purchaser we were uh, appointed by the purchasers to dismantle the machine that they had purchased there was a, uh, there was an implication that whatever services we provide there would be the agreement between the purchaser and our contractor was such that any vat on it would be payable by the contractor that is my client the uh, uh, in norway you cannot go directly from india and you know represent them you have to engage a norwegian uh, firm who will represent uh, or put up your issue in the norwegian language before the authorities so we engaged a firm having an antecedent of more than 100 years when we went for the initial meeting uh, their view was that no we will have to end up uh, paying that amount of vat which was huge and uh, my view was since we have been 
right from the basic when we were studying we have been taught that you know if the end product is exempt from uh, vat when you are exporting something it's simply to make it more um, you know competitive in the global market so any uh, vat on the ancillary services related to making that end product sellable has to be exempt the norwegian authorities were not very clear on it the law firm was also not very clear on it however we presented a brief to them and i explained my part that see ultimately uh, you need to have your product sellable in the global market you have exempted the vat on the sale of that item but the removal of the item is attracting vat which is not really logical so we made an application to the advance ruling authority the initial application was rejected they said that no there will be uh, that implication on the dismantling part when we uh, appealed i prepared that brief and it got translated in the norwegian language and we put our uh, part in a very detailed manner and it got accepted which was a big win for the client uh, uh, you know looking at the amount that was involved and we were able to do that project successfully so that's how um, you know the things that are taught in our initial basic classes that help you when you are in practice so this was the issue that i would uh, want to share with everybody uh, that was really a complex issue uh, that you you know uh, that you actually told us right now so now uh, moving for, forward uh, how do you try to prevent litigation while drafting or advising on cross border agreements or contracts yeah so uh, any kind of contract the thumb rule that uh, over a uh, period of so many years that uh, i have come to understand is that the thumb rule should be to avoid any ambiguous language or any any scope of you know dual interpretation is it has to be clear it has to be detailed and when you are involving two parties who come from different regions or even maybe speaking two different basic languages it is always better to have your contracts worded in a very simplified manner if you feel that there is a scope for ambiguity that should be addressed right at the drafting stage and not when you are going into arbitration uh, or going to the courts to try and resolve the dispute so most of the disputes can be addressed if the drafting is good so i try and focus on uh, you know uh, we we have to spend more time on the drafting and planning of the contract so that the um, the thought of both the parties are included on paper to envisage the worst case scenarios and not keep anything vague just so that the contract can be signed at the earliest stage we take our time we try to draft it in simplified and unambiguous language we try to crystallize all the issues uh, thank you so much for that and now the pandemic now that we're still in between the pandemic and we're still trying to get out of it and uh, the pandemic saw some courts begin moving towards more remote proceedings and availability so is this sustainable and a possible way to increase access to justice in your opinion yes uh, i have uh, seniors as well as colleagues who uh, who are better utilizing their time now than before by you know uh, sitting in one office having multiple uh, laptops and uh, computers and uh, simultaneously appear appearing in various courts so it saves the time in traveling however uh, see your question is about sustainability of this there are cases where the physical appearance is a must so we have to look at uh, look at a scenario where a balance is maintained the simple issues can uh, be you know uh, sorted out online also but on the typical matters the lawyer has to be present before the bench and uh, arguing in physical form so that he can put up uh, those uh, complicated matters before the court in a more justified manner but uh, if 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 the matters are simple i think even the lawyer or the professional would prefer to sit in his chair in his office and argue the matter in a better way than uh, being present in a different court 
Exactly, I completely understand. And now, in the era of legal technology, what are the most commonly used tools for you? Yes, technology has, uh, you know, technology has gone far and wide. We try to stay ahead of the curve. We try to, uh, we keep uh, ourselves updated with the latest gadgets and the technology that's coming in. It's more of a challenge in a city like uh, Banaras than in uh, Delhi, Gurgaon, Bombay. Uh, to you know, have those technologies uh, available to you, but we try to uh, use it. For example, the uh, web conferencing software, Zoom, um, Teams. We have been using some form or the other before the COVID started, just to utilize our time efficiently. So we were really geared up, even in the pandemic times, to. The, you know, give access to our clients for, for our services online by being available on uh, web uh, video platforms. So that was, web video platforms have really helped in, uh, you know, uh, in having meetings with the clients, you, you save time. If you are doing it judiciously, you save time and uh, time traveling and you can uh, be available from a city like Varanasi uh, globally to the clients. So that's how we have been doing it and uh, we continue to use, uh, we are using a lot of other software for, you know, appointment bookings and uh, scheduling our day, etc. So that helps a lot. That is actually uh, the beauty of technology. So yes. as you said, and as you mentioned that, you know, uh, from Anarasi, you have actually reached out to, uh, I mean, you have reached out to each and every part of the world. So that's the beauty of technology. And now, as you all know that time is money in any profession and in legal is most of all. So how do you ensure to make the best use of time as a practicing chartered account? See, uh, it's all about the approach. If your approach is to be, uh, you know, focused on becoming a better professional each day, and you keep reminding yourself to be a better professional each day, it helps a lot. It goes a long way. That means my ideal time, it does not go on, uh, you know, watching movies, etc. I would rather prefer investing my time in becoming a better professional by reading up on new matters, reading up on uh, what's happening uh, across the globe related to our field, which makes me better as a professional and more available to my clients as and when that issue crops up for them. So uh, it has to be... Uh, that focus has to be there that, uh, and you keep asking yourself that question that uh, what I'm doing right now, is it going to help me as a professional at a later stage or not? That's very important in the early life of a professional to you know grow at a rapid rate. So that is something that I follow. I read a lot in my free time. And uh, as far as, as, far as uh, you know, uh, Organizing my time goes, I, uh, I follow certain practices. I try to prioritize on the urgent issues and because we have only 24 hours and 24 hours as much as we can do. So I prioritize on the urgent issues. I have a task list that I revisit every night before I go to sleep so I know what we have achieved and what we need to do the next day. So uh, that's how I have been doing it and uh, it's, it's helped me a lot. Thank you for explaining that really well. And now, uh, as a professional in the times of pandemic, what steps have you taken to ensure seamless service to your clients? Yeah, so one was the, uh, you know, uh, the embracing of latest technologies like the video platforms. We explored many platforms, which was the best for my clients. And accordingly, we moved the clients and we tried to make them understand those platforms. As well as uh, like in India, when the GST came, for all our clients, we were running free weekend classes to try to explain to them what the new GST was all about and to uh, try and clear our understanding of the new GST, the new law, as well as their understanding of the new law. So that, that has helped. We, uh, we have been, uh, you know, uh, we have been doing, continuing that trend even now 
we do meetings from time to time with accounting teams of our clients to try to explain them the latest that has been happening uh, uh, in the uh, laws. Income tax is changing a lot. The GST is changing every day. So we try to keep them abreast with what's been happening. And uh, uh, as far as how we ensure seamless service goes, I have I was hospitalized for uh, an X amount of time during the second wave. But uh, uh, we ensured that uh, the client's work was getting done and I did not suffer simply by having a system in place where if I, even if I'm not available, my team is available to them and getting everything done to the best of their abilities. So uh, the focus for professionals should be to always keep asking the question that uh, if, if something happens to me, uh, it's a skill-based work, do I have a team behind me which will take care of that work so that my client does not suffer, who depends a lot on me to get the job done. So uh, I have been asking that question for the past five years and uh, it has helped in uh, providing seamless service even in the times of pandemic. Exactly. I mean, pandemic uh, did, you know, uh, it, it actually uh, helped us to, you know, look at things from different perspectives. So that's how we learned a lot of new things, uh, be it on the professional end or on the personal end. And now, uh, thank you so much for sharing such great insights with us. And we look forward to having a chat with you again in the future on some other trending topics in the international legal world. So for our viewers, if you like this chat with Mr. Puneet Kumar Singh, please like and share this video and also subscribe to Click Away Creators YouTube channel to appreciate what we do. And you have more coming from the legal space. So this is Nikhil for Let's Talk World signing off.